I do want to make just one comment with regards to social media where I feel like, you know, as I've observed what you're doing, you know, in your school, you really have grabbed this thing, which in often ways can be used to abuse schools, abuse school mm -hmm. leaders and teachers mm -hmm. and, and even students, unfortunately. Um, and, and I think at times that's causes for people to want to resist even dealing with it at all. Yeah. However, if, if we don't choose to engage and be where people are mm -hmm. and then don't use that for, for what's positive yeah. and to showcase what's good and work to control the narrative, right, it will be, it will be used against us Absolutely. in so many ways because yep. that negative stuff, unfortunately, tends to spread pretty fast mm -hmm. and furious force. Mm -hmm. So I, I appreciate what you're doing there. Um, so many things we could talk about the work that you're doing at Huntley. Uh, I know you've got some some great work that's going on with competency-based education yeah. and such. And so uh, we won't get into that just for time's sake, but I would highly encourage people that are interested, because I've had an opportunity to tour your school mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago, pre-pandemic. Um, and uh, it's fascinating the work that you've got going on there. So kudos to you oh. and your team well, thank you. for all thank of that. You. But if anybody's interested in it, I'd highly recommend uh, giving Marcus a call and talking about yeah. it. But do want to discuss, uh, before we get into more association-related things, and you know, you being president this year, our first black president yeah. as an association, our 50th anniversary yeah. as an association. So many positive <laughs> things happening right now at IPA, 6,000 members, I mean, all of that. Yeah. Uh, but, but circling back to, to Huntley, um, I know, you know, through the pandemic, you worked extremely hard to stay connected to kids. You gave each of your seniors uh, for the 2020 yeah. graduating class, their own kind of personal graduation in their driveway. Yeah, that was fun. A lot of videos <laughs> there. Um, you know, a couple of thoughts here for you. First off, you know, how did you take care of yourself mm -hmm. through that that time of, 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 you know, coming off of your first year and then heading into to a, you know, this time of, of intense crisis leadership? Uh, and I guess the other thing is um, just, you know, what do you what do you see us now needing to do as school leaders as we work to lead ourselves out of this thing? Yeah. Uh, so I've hit you with a couple big big items yeah. there. So you pick which where you want to start first. Uh, we'll start with the self care piece. Um, when I when the pandemic started and we shut down in March, <laughs> I'll never forget my AP uh, of operations came and he was like, Marcus, I think we need all the kids to take their stuff home, and I'm like. Why? Like, well, this thing is going on. Like, we'll be yeah. two weeks tops. Like, we'll be back, mm -hmm. you know, ready to go. They say 10 days. Like, we'll be back. Um, <laughs> a year later, 15 months later, like, we're still sitting there looking uh, with this thing just close in our review mirror. Um, but that was a point in time where what fills my tank uh, is being in a building with kids. Mm -hmm. um, and just loving what I do, you know, every day. And then able to come home and see my own kids and my family, um, like that's the other piece of it, right? So I just get it all, all the way around. But uh, I noticed in March, we got to April and then into May, I felt like summer, summer is coming, right? Like everybody will hop off their computers, like everybody will just kind of take some time and just be. But at that point, we were already tired. Everybody was tired of being at home. <laughs> yeah. They were like, we got to get out. We've missed graduations. We missed all, mm -hmm. We've missed all of these traditional things. And summer didn't feel like summer was approaching. And when summer got here, it didn't feel like a summer at all because we just kept working. Um, home became, it was hard because it was trying to find a balance between how do I be dad with my kids who are running around and run a school sitting here at the dining room table? And then I moved to the basement and the, base, the basement was like my dungeon. It was, it was my whole, but also to trying to keep our school community connected. Yeah. Uh, and so I found myself working around the clock. It was like constant phones here, checking emails, um, you know, with a school my size. Um, typically when kids are there, they know whose offices to go to. They may not know like who works in that particular place mm -hmm. or no names, but they're like, okay, if I need this, I go here. Right. When you're at home, parents have no idea who to reach out to, mm -hmm. students have no idea, so they reach out to the only person they know and that's the principal. So I was averaging, man, 250 to 300 emails daily. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah. Oh my goodness. And I'm for, I had to tell my team like, Hey, I'm going to forward you all stuff. Mm -hmm. And if I forward it and it has no message in the body, like just, 
just read it and deal with I, it. My expectation <laughs> is that you answer it. Right. That's what I had to tell him. I was like, we have got to share this um, because I was trying to take on too much. Mm-hmm. I was tired. I was um, I couldn't find that separation of like, man, I can leave this here and then be with family because my computer was there. Uh, so I found that I started, you know, uh, man, I prayed about it. Yeah. I was just like, man, I, I have got to find a balance between life and family because um, I saw myself kind of slipping away into more work than mm-hmm. anything. Um, you, so, you mentioned, let me just briefly interrupt you here. You mentioned connection mm-hmm. here and people being connected. Uh, you know, obviously you and your wife are strong partners with each other. You've mm-hmm. got your mom. Uh, but but who, who else, you know, when you think about even professionally, who are you connected with in that way? And, and I asked this question for a reason, Marcus, because recently I was, at one of, during one of my early morning runs, I was listening to podcasts podcast with Simon Sinek, and I forget the name of the guest who he had on, but they were talking about measuring well-being and happiness in some other countries. Mm-hmm. And they said, or in countries generally, including the U.S., but, but they said generally they are able to determine people's well-being by two questions that they ask. And that is, is, is do you have someone, if you are in, are in trouble, struggling, do you have someone that you can reach out to who will be there for you no matter what? Mm-hmm. I mean, who's on your list for that? The second question mm-hmm. that they ask, which is even more powerful, <laughs> yeah. is, uh, is whose list are you on? Mm-hmm. Meaning they know uh, that they can call you and say, you know what, that person I know will be there for me no matter what's going on. You know, I'm not looking for you to name names here or anything like that, but, but I'm just curious, uh, you know, who are you, generally speaking, who are you connected with? How important was that for you when you think about leading during mm-hmm. this time? Because I, and part of me is I think about our association and, and moving forward and supporting school leaders uh, when we are still dealing with the stressful time, really needing to emphasize the importance of that. It's how we keep people mm-hmm. well. It's how yeah. we keep people in the profession. Yeah, you know, it's, the, it's that. Uh, it's what I call the inner circle. Um, yeah. The circle Explain that. that that's closest to you. Um, you know, it's those people who, yeah, you can call and say, "All right, look, I have no idea what I'm doing." Mm. Um, there's there's many times I've called, especially leading through a pandemic. We making schedule changes and we're doing this and yeah. that. And no, no one that on my team has led through, no one that I know right. has led through a pandemic. And this is not something you can open up a book and say, oh, chapter 13, pandemic. Well, let's see. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, it's funny you we say will, that. We will now. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. I know. We'll hopefully never have to use it again. It's funny you say that because I called one of the predecessors, my predecessors here at IPA, and I said, hey, man, where's the pandemic binder? I can't find it and I need it here. So everybody's anyway. going to have one on their yeah, shelf now. Yeah, I right, mean, because right. we can't just throw all this stuff away. And this will probably be a great book or a great mm-hmm. series, movie, whatever, yeah. Netflix series, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. pandemic in school. Um, but uh, Man, it, it was people that um, I would call my mom for sure. Yeah. Like my mom, she's in education and, and um, you know, works for concept schools. And uh, so she was able to see this on a different magnitude living in the city. Mm-hmm. Um, and city of Chicago was a lot more locked down than right. the rest of the, the state. If you mm-hmm. weren't in the city of Chicago, it was kind of like the driving force during the pandemic of looking at numbers and so forth. And so I would call my mom and my mom talks to me in a way where it's like, Okay, Marcus, like she knows if I'm just being emotional and vulnerable Mm -hmm. in a conversation or I'm just like way over my head and it's like, okay, let's bring you back to reality Mm -hmm. and like you got this. And, you know, my mom, she she knows me for who I need to be. And so she's not going to sugarcoat anything. She's going to go straight to the point. Um, uh, and important people to have in our lives. By yeah, the way. yeah. Whether they're moms or somebody else, that's pretty critical. Yeah, and my dad, who's not in, he's in education from a different uh, perspective. He uh, he does security for Columbia College downtown. Oh, wow. So he's got tons of officers, tons of building. He's downtown mm-hmm. Chicago, so he's managing uh, he's managing the operations and the logistics of running a, a, a college. Yeah. So I get that perspective from him of like. I call him, we talk every day, and he, because he doesn't have that educational background, he helps me think of things like on a very just literal, like, Marcus, just think of it as a basic, mm-hmm. basic understanding, no education behind it. Um, um, and then, you know, tapping into my PLN, uh, yeah. there's a, a ton of people um, in the area, Bar Valley, uh, mm-hmm who is at Jacobs High School, literally right across the street yeah, from me. On the IPA board. On the yeah. IPA board, mm-hmm. yep. And she, 
uh, we're rival high schools, but you know, my my connection and relationship with her was I would she would call and say, hey, what's your district doing? Because it's like a snow day. Mm. If <laughs> if Chicago <laughs> Public Schools right. or Peoria Public mm-hmm. Schools called a snow day, you know everybody around you, regardless of how big or small you are, like yeah. you're just gonna start following suit. And our because our districts but right next to each other, we'd always have conversation of what are you all thinking about? What's coming? Because we yeah. knew that uh, our superintendents talked. Um, so it was just tapping in with people who were around me, yeah. um, other principals within my district that were going through some of the same things that I was going through. But again, that inner circle is, it's having people who, somebody who's at least in your situation that's close, that mm-hmm. you can, that can understand. You don't have to give them all the details yeah. because they know the details. Um, and then those people who don't know the details that are completely outside that can give you a fresh perspective. Uh, and I have a lot of, uh, a lot of that. Um, I'm still family here in Peoria. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I call them mom and dad, but they uh, were the pastor and, and first lady of, of the church that um, we, we went to when we were here. I'd call them and say, hey, all right, look, I need prayer. <laughs> I need help. Yeah. I need an answer for this. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that was important. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, that's outstanding. So one of the things I, I, as we were dealing with, you know, continued leadership through the pandemic, and then, then we'll move on to IPA. Uh, but, you know, I know we're wrestling with getting back to school, lots mm-hmm. of conversations happening right now uh, with regards to, you know, what that's going to look like, spacing, mask, not to mask, mm-hmm. you know, who's going to have this ultimate decision making. But one thing I wanted to, to just ask you a little bit about that I know in Huntley, you've, you've really been engaged with this because uh, I know what's been happening at your school is you've been supporting getting people vaccinated yeah. uh, within your district, and which I think is outstanding. I think it's part of the reason, you know, we, we've seen that, that type of partnership happening in communities with schools that's uh, allowed for us to be in phase five right mm-hmm. now, see our positivity rates mm-hmm. really drop, uh, hopefully looking at seeing, well, planning to, to have IPA conference in person in October. I'll just yeah. drop that in here as well. Excited. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more about that in a bit. But um, you know, talk talk us through that a little bit, Marcus, because I I think you know there's still a desire, especially as we see the the possibility of uh, down the road being able to vaccinate even younger children, that there could be the need for us still to have for some time this this ongoing partnership with schools uh, to you know provide opportunities for individuals mm-hmm. and young people if uh, if their families feel that's appropriate for them to to get vaccinated. So. You know, how did that come about for you there in, in Huntley and, yeah. and kind of what's been happening uh, since Yeah, then? so I, I give uh, credit to our district office uh, staff. I mean, our superintendent is, is connected with uh, McHenry County um, and, and our associate superintendent and being on the health department calls. And um, when vaccination started coming, it was just like, what can we do? Mm-hmm. Uh, my superintendent reached out and was like, we'll be a vaccination site. Like, you just yeah. tell us what, what you need. Uh, and when they said that they were going to do it at the high school, naturally I was on the on the team, the core team right. uh, of planning uh, mm-hmm. this vaccination clinic. Um, and this was uh, specifically for educators uh, south of, of Route 176, which kind of runs through Crystal Lake and yep. um, uh, just kind of straight through McHenry County. And so Woodstock North High School took anything north of 176. We took anything south of 176, yeah. all in McHenry County. Uh, so we had about 4,000 people Wow. Uh, that came to our building uh, to get vaccinated. Um, mm-hmm. Back in, in February was the first and then March was the second. And it was probably the smoothest large event that was that did a lot of things. One, um, it brought people together. Yeah. Uh, even during a pandemic, educators were able to see other educators and know like, man, you're struggling, I'm struggling, I'm tired of Zoom, I get to see people, you know. So <laughs> right. that time, you know, when you gotta mm-hmm. wait after the shot, you gotta yeah. wait that 15 minutes. Right. Man, that, that became almost like the hangout spot, yeah. like socially distanced hangout spot because mm-hmm. people were like, oh my goodness, I see you. Like I'm used to seeing you behind the screen. Right. Um, but it brought people together. Uh, it gave people a sense of, of relief. There were a lot of people who walked in that first day, man, and they were like nervous. And I would be checking them in, I'm like, hey, you okay? Yeah, I'm just nervous. I was like, I got the shot. I was the first, I got uh, the first shot that morning at 7.15 and I was moving throughout the day. I'm like, man, I'm mm-hmm. doing great. Um, and 
you know, people who were nervous still, it was a sense of relief. And then after we did the second, uh, the second dose, man, it was like people's reactions and people's understanding of like this thing was like, okay, cool. Now this is, yeah. is behind me. Um, and it was a sense of relief. And I think educators needed that to push them through mm -hmm. the rest of the year. Um, um, because their sense of, of anxiety and nervousness about the pandemic had kind of quelled a little bit because they knew that they were vaccinated at mm -hmm. that point. Um, we're getting ready to uh, run one here uh, in a couple of days um, at the high school for students who are eligible uh, for the vaccine. Yeah. So uh, they're getting a the Pfizer and they're doing one on the, the, the first shot on the 10th and the next mm -hmm. one on the 30th. So do they come with like parental permission slips and, and all of that? Yeah, so, how does, how does so that Walgreens, work? Walgreens is actually doing this one. Um, okay. McHenry County Health Department ran the last one. Or do um, they sign up in advance then? Yeah, so it, it'll just, the doors will be open, Got right? Um, and, and people will be able to come in because the vaccines are very plentiful now. Right. Um, it's just like, they're there. Yeah, that's you know, right. People you just got to do just it. Just got to go get it, mm -hmm. right? And it, it, it's all uh, that internal struggle for people who are like, do I, do I not? Um, you know, at some point it, my thinking is like, where do we, where's the line drawn in the sand of like, mm -hmm. okay, we can move, we can say that the pandemic is over, we can move past the pandemic. Once the numbers go all the way down or what have you, um, it becomes a choice, like the flu shot. Yep, right. There's people who don't get the flu vaccine. Yeah. It's like, okay, but the world still continues to, to move in a circle. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, um, but kids will be able to come. Um, and what's exciting is that uh, because of the timeline of this, like they will be, after the 30th is still two weeks mm -hmm. uh, before you're like fully vaccinated and which will lead up until they have one more week then before school starts. Um, so I'm hoping that um, schools can create processes to have kids submit their vaccination cards. We've done that already because mm -hmm. uh, we have camps going on um, so that we know, you know, what percentage of our population and depending on that, whenever we get guidance right. uh, on what we can do as a school, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, we'll be ready. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm excited about that, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of uh, school leaders are as well, oh, because yeah. I can't do another year of a, of a pan. I can't make eight schedules in a year. Yeah. I can't figure out how to, I can't lead my team and, and fig I can if I had to, but I don't want to right. uh, lead through another year of just craziness and seeing, mm -hmm. um, you know, the traditional things of high school yeah. uh, that kids go through, the, 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 the passing of the torch for, uh, from seniors who have graduated on to now new seniors yeah. or freshmen coming in, like those are just experience that are that are key and monumental to their growth. Yeah. Um, I just Agreed. want to see that happen again. Agreed. So couldn't agree with you more. Yeah.